Hello friends, welcome everybody to this presentation. I am so freezing and today we are going to be looking at the proper way to anchor a reinforced concrete beam to a shower wall. In addition, we are going to be looking at how to move a reinforced concrete beam in protest structure from one green lines to another successfully. Okay, so we'll be looking at the first, which is how to anchor a reinforced concrete beam to a shower. I have noticed in many times I have carried out design of a shower wall being attached to a reinforced concrete structure like this. After the analysis and design, I noticed that the, the shower wall actually failed. I believe that uh, most of us must have noticed that and have come to realize the cause of the failure of the shower wall whenever a reinforced concrete beam is anchored to it successfully. So we are going to be looking at that. But before we proceed, I want to be throwing more light on the difference between shower wall and reinforced concrete columns. All right? Because a reinforced concrete column is actually meant to, a reinforced concrete column is actually meant to receive the load that is coming from the beams successfully while the load that's coming from the beam is first of all move from the slab that of the slab actually moves to the beam and from the beam it gets to the column now the column has the current capacity to actually withstand that load successfully but the wall does not have such carrying capacity that is why most of the times when you anchor your beam directly to the shower wall you will notice that after analysis, the shower wall will fail. However, number of reinforcements you added to the shower wall, it will actually fail. Now, let me do these small explanations to us. Reinforced concrete column has a large axial load and its shear response is similar to that of beam. Okay? Very similar to that of beam. And it has a large axial load carrying capacity. Online column, just as I've explained earlier. Whereas a wall has a low axial load and its shear behavior is similar to that of one way slab. So when you notice a shear behavior of a one way slab, it does the same thing to that of the wall. So it is not right for you to actually anchor your beams to a shared wall. Except that particular point of anchorage should be designed in a way that it looks like a reinforced concrete columns uh, reinforcement design. Okay, so for instance, if I should navigate to the, if I navigate to the plan view of this story where I am, this is story three right there. Okay, so I will click right here and then navigate to the plan view of this story three just like this. You will notice what I have done and what you should be doing during designing a structure that is carrying an elevator wall like this. And it has to also have a reinforced concrete beam connected to it. Don't do not connect your beams directly to the wall. Let's, for instance, the beam apples to let me use this beam for, for example. Okay, the beam apples to connect from this point all over to this point, just like this. Okay, so this is a beam connecting directly to a wall like this. This is not good. Do not do it because this wall will fail. It's going to fail. Okay. Because it doesn't, it, it doesn't have that capacity to carry the load. Because this beam you see here is not only carrying itself wet and the load and the wall load on it to this wall, but it's carrying also the load from the slab. All right. So the wall, which is the shower wall, elevator wall, does not have that strength to withstand the load. That is why you see failure. So at this point, if you want to actually connect a beam to this particular point, you should have a reinforced concrete column here or the design. In this particular place, provision point of anchorage should be as the same as that of the reinforced concrete column. By so doing, you will not see any failure. Okay, but how to overcome that important structure is that you have to take this reinforced concrete column and then 
bring it over to this place and they placed it here so if you place it here it simply means it is the reinforced concrete column that is actually uh carrying the reinforced concrete beam and not the wall just as i've placed it like this all right so i want to be deleting it and just using it to show you an example so this is how you can actually anchor your reinforced concrete beam to your shower it is through reinforced concrete column and not directly on the shower okay so i will be throwing more light on the explanation also uh, the difference between the column and the reinforced concrete wall column transfer this load by using the crushing or compressive strength of the concrete however column is very weak in case of lateral load buckling load or shear load okay column is weak in lateral load okay loading horizontal that is horizontal load all right lateral load is an horizontal load column is very weak in that so you have to take note of that while shear wall on the other hand is designed to resist lateral load by shear by shear strength or shear action lateral load by shear strength or shear actions that is the purpose of the design of a shear wall and not to receive an axial load okay so you should have to take note of all of that so i believe that is understood if you still have any doubt or questions you can drop it at the comment sections mind you this is product structure 2022 i'm using for these presentations okay I'm, I'm using this project this is a one of the master cloud project in reinforced concrete uh, design okay so if you join our master class in reinforced concrete design you will also look at something of this kind and more complex project like this okay so I've explained that successfully. I want to show us how, how you can actually move a beam from one green lines to another. Okay, so I will also navigate to the plan view of that particular story. Yeah, I am. Yeah, right. So I will first of all offset this green line D upward. So I will right click and then select offset right there. So you just have to hold down the shift key and press F2 to enable the typing provision right there. And then I want to offset one meter just like this. Okay, and then I'll enter. On the keyboard to have a green line e just like that so this beam 3 b6 250 by 500 i want to be moving this beam from this green line d to green line e successfully so for you to move that you have to first of all select the beam right click and then you navigate to where you see move there in the drop down menu select move okay after being selected click this first point and then come over to this place click the second point and then see the move the beam has been moved successfully to that green line E. So this is how you can move your beam from one green line to another successfully. Okay. And you check over here, you see a symbol here. This is a triangular symbol. This symbol is telling you that this beam is a cantilever beam. All right. So whenever you see this kind of symbols, even if you are seeing it where you actually anchored both ends of the beam, make sure you remove it because it is a cantilever sign. It's telling you that the beam at that end is not properly anchored to the column. And so it is acting as a cantilever beam why you'll be thinking is being anchored and when you run analysis you'll be seeing some of these errors that you never expect to see all right so this is how it works i will have to undo this all right and then also navigate to the 3d successfully click right here right click and then select change to 3d view just like this okay so here yeah, we come to the end of this presentation for now don't forget to like the lesson do not forget to also subscribe to this channel so freezing as we bring to you more advanced lesson of this kind Stay safe, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next presentation. Bye for now.